Mike Thomas, realtor of over 30 years of experience here in South Florida. And I wanted to talk to everybody about the home buying process. A lot of people are confused about how to buy a house. And if you haven't bought a home in a while, and what I mean by a while is um, within, oh boy, I don't know, the last three years or so, because a lot of things changed. So I wanted to talk to you about it through uh, let's get started because there's a lot of good information in here. Make sure you stay tuned all the way until the end so you get all the important information that I'm going to convey to you today. So the first thing is you got your pre-approval letter. You talk to a lender. You know how much money you uh, can can afford to buy or that you feel comfortable buying. And now you're out house shopping with a real estate agent. You found a house you like and you go to contract. As far as going to contract, is the real estate agent's going to prepare a contract for you um, with all of the terms and conditions that you want in there and that will get that house uh, under contract for you. Now, signing the contract is not buying the house. Uh, it's part of buying a house, but the actual part that makes the contract solid is the earnest money deposit. Uh, some people call it escrow money, earnest money, binder money. A lot of states call it binder money. It's because it binds the contract. So without that earnest money or binder money or escrow money, as some states call it, uh, you really don't have a contract. Um, so within, uh, within a short period of time, uh, it's normally submitted with the offer saying, here we have an offer. Here is the binder money or escrow money. Um, if you do not uh, give escrow money within a certain time, like here in Florida, I think it defaults to three days, including Saturdays and Sundays. Uh, so if you don't give them the binder money, there is no contract. The contract is null and void. So just so you're not confused, a lot of buyers think, well, I'll give them the binder money after I do my inspections. Well, the problem is this. If you were to do that, which I highly recommend you don't. In fact, you should never do that uh, because you don't own the property yet. You don't have it under contract. But Mike, I signed the I signed the paperwork. Yes, but you didn't bind the contract by giving them the binder money or the escrow money or or you know, the money for to take it off the market. So once you've given them the money and you've taken it off the market, the next thing is the inspection. And people always want to see how does the inspection go. Now, buying a house can be quite costly because you're going to do an inspection, which is going to cost you several hundred dollars. And you're going to do an appraisal, which is going to cost you several hundred dollars. If you end up not buying the house, you're going to be out several hundred dollars maybe even over $1,000, just to take a look at the house, do the inspections, and do the appraisal. But the good news is, is when you do an inspection, you have a peace of mind that you're buying a nice house. You're not buying a pair of shoes. You're not buying a pizza or Uber Eats. This is a house. This is a very large investment. So it's going to cost a little bit of money to determine whether you're buying a good house or the house is worth the amount of money that um, you're paying for it. So these are great protections for you. And yes, they do cost money. It's normally out of pocket. Sometimes uh, it's paid at closing. Uh, depends on how you set this up. So first of all, you, you executed the contract. You gave them the earnest money deposit, binder money, or some people call it escrow money. And now you're legally under contract. You're, you're under contract. Uh, you have an inspection period. And in this time, that inspection period may be very, very short. So uh, don't waste time. Call an inspector right away. The inspector should be your choice. Now, a real estate agent may recommend a couple of people that they've known and worked with. But the ultimate decision about who you choose for an inspector uh, should be your own because that inspector is your inspector. Um, a lot of times people come to me and say, Mike, I don't know any inspectors. I don't, what do I look for? And 
I'll make a couple of recommendations. I'll give them two or three people that I've used in the past that have done good work. Uh, other than that, I'd say, say Google home inspectors near me and call around if you can get a better price, a cheaper deal. Um, but inspections are normally, you know, a ride around the same price. I've never seen one that is super, super low. And if it were, I definitely question, you know, the inspector and his abilities. You always want to do what we call a four point and a wind mitigation because that will lower your insurance rates. And that's very, very important. So a home inspection inspects the house. If, if it has a swimming pool, they, they add all of these things in. These are like add-on costs. So just to do a home inspection, it may be X amount of dollars. And if you have a swimming pool, they may add on a surcharge. If you have a shed or a guest house, it may be a little bit more money because it's another structure or something that they have to inspect. Um, but as far as wind mitigation here in Florida, you definitely want a wind mitigation. It basically tells the insurance how your house will do in the case of emergency like a, a hurricane or windstorm. So it will lower your insurance because it will give you a rating. If you do not do a wind mitigation or a four point, and four point is four different points. They, they do the heating, plumbing, electrical, um, you know, roof, the, just the major part of the house. So you're gonna wanna do a four point and a wind mit to submit to the insurance company and this will pay for itself. It will uh, in lower rates. Uh, even if you hardly get any credit whatsoever for that, you're gonna, have the ability to know what you need to do to actually lower your insurance costs. And that may be getting some hurricane shutters, maybe getting some impact windows, and it may be, um, you know, needing a new roof, whatever the conditions are, you're going to know what it will take for you to have a lower insurance cost. So you want it, the four point and a wind mitigation report. Termites versus non-termites, uh, all of that is inclusive. Um, some people say, well, why do I need a termite inspection? It's a brick house. Well, there's wood somewhere, mostly in the trusses, and it's for your own peace of mind. That's a determination you make on your own. Uh, if you decide not to, I make you sign a waiver saying, hey, I decided not to do that. Um, even though it was against the recommendation of the real estate agent. Maybe it's too costly for you. Maybe you don't think you need it, whatever the reason is. And once the inspection period is over, you're basically done with inspection. They've given you the time. Um, don't drag your feet on getting the inspection done. Do it right away. As soon as I go, as soon as you're under contract, the very first day, call the inspector, get an inspector out there. Um, Spend a couple hours if you want to call around and shop for, for different rates, but get that inspection done right away because you want to know something right away. You don't want to be two, three weeks into it and then find out that, um, you know, if you have a long inspection period, you may be two weeks into it and find out that this is not the property you want to buy. So get that inspection done straight away. So the next thing is the appraisal. So once that's done, you're going to go, okay, well, is this house worth what it is worth? Now, appraisal is done by an independent person. And that means that the buyer doesn't hire the appraiser. The seller doesn't hire the appraiser. The person who hires the appraiser is the bank. And the reason why is because the bank doesn't have any interest in the property. They're not excited about the property. They don't love the property. They're not, they don't have sweat equity in the property. They have nothing. And so when the, and they're the ones that choose the appraisal company. And then the appraisal company chooses the inspector on a rotational basis. That's how most people do it. I don't know. I'm sure it varies from state to state, but it's very um, non-biased. So if a buyer hires a, an appraiser, he may be biased to the buyer. If a seller hires the, an appraiser, he may be biased to the seller. And so therefore, uh, to have a non-biased appraiser is is hired by, you know, a, an independent third party such as the bank. Uh, so after that, you basically have a loan commitment. 
with conditions. They always have conditions. And the conditions are you got to get homeowner's insurance. The property has to appraise. You know, it has to, you know, have a sound roof on it. No roof leaks. Uh, FHA requires no cracked windows, things like that. So all of those are going to be conditions of the loan. Now, sometimes there may be some added conditions. These are what I consider to be typical conditions. You know, it must have a free and clear title as a typical condition. It must appraise it. It's, the, it's a typical condition. Uh, the property has to be a sound structure. You know, a lot of times no roof leaks or anything like that because a bank doesn't want to lend money on something that's that's going to eventually cause them a lot of problems. It has to be an insurable property. Those are normal conditions. What are not normal conditions are that the loan is contingent upon uh, maybe the buyer to rent out his property that he's that he owns right now. Maybe instead of selling his property, he wants to rent it out and he has to find a renter for it prior to closing. This is a condition. That's not a typical condition. Or that the buyer has to um, you know, verify income to make sure that he still has a job the day of closing. Um, that's more of a typical condition. I think that all lenders require that. Um, maybe another non-typical condition would be that he has to pay off certain debt to qualify for the mortgage. Uh, all of those things are kind of conditions, loan conditions, and they have to be removed. Um, some of them are easy to remove and some of them are a little bit harder to remove these conditions to qualify. But the seller should be notified of each condition, everything that has to be removed. Okay, well, you know, these are the conditions of the loan. Uh, when a lender sends me a loan approval letter, I the first thing that goes through my mind, are there any unusual conditions? Other than, yeah, of course, the property has to appraise, and yes, it has to be in sound condition, and yeah, it has to, you know, um, be a solid structure. What about the buyer? Uh, are there any special conditions special conditions that the buyer has to meet to get this loan. And those should be uh, clearly described to the owner because the owner should know about those conditions. Um, so once all the conditions have been removed, it's time for closing. Yay, you finally get the keys and you think that you're all going to sit at the same table and shake the seller's hand and they're going to give you the keys and be so sweet. And the answer is no. Nowadays, the buyer signs, the seller signs, sometimes they're not even in the same state. Uh, there's a lot of remote uh, signing that goes on. So the title company will actually send a notary republic to wherever you are. You sign all the documents. They send it out to a different state where the seller is. He signs the documents. Uh, sometimes people pre-sign documents like a day or so before closing, they'll sign the documents because maybe they have to work that day. They, their schedule won't allow it. So sometimes somebody signs early. Uh, you can never sign late here in the state of Florida because once you pass the closing date, you know, it becomes a whole different ball of wax. So without an extension, uh, if you go past closing date, your earnest money, uh, binder money, or escrow money, as it's called, um, would be at risk. So don't miss the closing date. The title company won't allow that. As far as keys, they normally leave everything with the title company or an agent, and everybody schedules how to get the keys to you and to get everything like that. But the days of everybody sitting at the closing table, signing simultaneously, um, are probably way in the past and you shouldn't expect to be with the seller at the same closing table. Uh, highly unlikely. Uh, can happen, but extremely rare nowadays. So that's the buying process. Once you move into the property, then of course you know that you bought a good property. It's been thoroughly inspected you know that it's worth the amount of money that you paid for because you've had an appraisal done by the bank, which is nonpartisan to anyone, and that um, 
the home is worth the money and that you have the keys and now you're happy inside your home. Uh, what you do need to know is how much everything is going to cost you uh, with the lender, how much is your mortgage payment, because sometimes taxes can go up uh, based on what you paid for the property. So don't be surprised if next year comes rolling around and your monthly payment is higher and you're going to go, oh my God, what happened? Taxes probably have gone up. I recommend homesteading the property if it's your primary residence. If you can, you can only homestead one property. So um, that's that will help. If you already live in a homestead and you're moving to another home, uh, here in Florida, we have what they call Save Our Home Portability. So you're actually transferring your your tax rate that you have on your, your current property to your new property. What happens then, though, is the taxes on your, your old property can go up because it's no longer under that exemption. So all of those things uh, you may want to consider. I always uh, recommend talking to... Um, you know, getting some legal advice, um, talking to professionals like real estate agents. We're always more than happy to answer any of your questions. If you have any questions about the home buying process, please leave me a comment down below. Uh, if you like this video, you think it's helpful, uh, give us a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of those videos, we sure would love to hear from you. Thanks again. Enjoy your home buying process. Enjoy your new home.